Last week, we discussed civil rights. This week, we will cover civil liberties. We are going to cover the nationalization of civil liberties, writing rights and liberties into the Constitution, freedom of speech, freedom of, of the press, and freedom of religion. Of course, there are countless other things we could discuss as they relate to civil liberties, but this is what we are going to focus on in this slideshow. Civil liberties have dominated the news in recent years. There has been a lot of focus on uh, focus and <clears throat> there has been a lot of focus on protests surrounding the actions of police officers. Edward Snowden exposed the activities of the NSA that violate civil liberties. Recently, the Supreme Court ruled that gay marriage could not be banned in the states. Historically, the great advances in civil liberties have occurred when a national majority took up a minority's cause. Think about our lesson on civil rights and the political coalition required to pass civil rights reform. Civil liberties are a domain in which national majorities are constrained in fixing national policy. Anti-federalist critics of the ratification of the Constitution sought assurance that the rights included in the Bill of Rights could not be easily removed or abridged. It would take an overwhelming majority to modify rights through a constitutional amendment. The clear language of the Bill of Rights provides government officials with little power to relax its prescriptions. However, there are still ambiguities. No amendment is absolute. For example, the Eighth Amendment prohibits cruel and unusual punishment. What does this mean? Who decides what is cruel and unusual? Does this mean that a punishment can be cruel as long as it is not unusual? and that a punishment can be unusual as long as it is not cruel. The Supreme Court practice of judicial review, which gives them the ability to rule on the constitutionality of laws, has allowed the Supreme Court to move to the forefront of civil liberties policy and has created a revolution of rights and liberties. Consider the action the Supreme Court has taken on gay marriage. Without their ruling, many states would very likely still have bans on gay marriage. Incorporation was using the 14th Amendment, which gave the national government the right to protect the rights of former slaves, to make the Bill of Rights binding on state government and not just the national government. The, the Due Process Clause and the Equal Protections Clause allow all persons to enjoy the same civil liberties and rights, and states cannot deny a person the due process of law. Over time, the Supreme Court has gradually assumed guardianship of civil, civil rights by applying piecemeal the various provisions of the Bill of Rights to state laws and practices. This is referred to as selective incorporation. Americans want to believe that justices are objective and free from politics, but in practice, ideologies are present in every decision. The provisions of the Constitution are open to interpretation by the justices. Is limiting campaign contributions a violation of freedom of speech? Is money speech? Some justices would answer yes, others would answer no. Of course, by selecting and confirming nominees whose political values agree with their own, the White House and the Senate can influence the course of judiciary policy. The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of speech. There are two types of speech that are not protected. Speech that advocates illegal action 
and obscenity. One common misconception of freedom of speech uh, pro is that freedom of speech protects us from the negative consequences of our speech. It does not. When Phil Robertson was suspended from the show Duck Dynasty because of his comments about homosexuals, his freedom of speech was not violated. He does not have the right to a television show, and his employer can suspend him if they choose. Amazon.com did not violate anyone's freedom of speech when they decided to stop selling Confederate flags. They are not obligated to sell the flag. The San Francisco 49ers could, though they have not, cut Colin Kaepernick from, from the team after his national anthem demonstrations, and he would not have had his freedom of speech violated. The important thing to remember is that freedom of speech protects us from the government, not our employers. It protects us from the government and not from the negative consequences of our speech. If, if you got a job at McDonald's and told every customer that walked in the door that Wendy's hamburgers are the best, McDonald's would fire you. You can tell people how great Wendy's hamburgers are, but McDonald's does not have to employ you. If we started arresting people for their comments about homosexuals, for kneeling during the national anthem, for advocating for Wendy's hamburgers, then we would have violated freedom of speech. The Supreme Court upheld the Alien Registration Act of 1940 during the Korean War by affirming the conviction of 11 top members of the American Communist Party for having advocated the violent overthrow of the government. The court argued that the government could not be expected to idly watch traitors hatch a rebellion. The photo on this slide is of Woody Guthrie. He was a famous songwriter and a communist sympathizer, though he was never officially a member of the Communist Party. Guthrie wrote the song, This Land is Your Land, which is considered one of the most patriotic songs of all time. In the, ca the case, Dennis v. United States established the interpretation of the clear and present danger test. In each case, the, course, the court must ask whether the gravity of evil, discounted by its probability, justifies such an invasion of freedom of speech as is necessary to avoid danger. In layman's terms, uh, how serious is the threat to the national government? The First Amendment does not protect obscenity, whether expressed verbally, graphically, on the internet, or on conventional written paper. The Supreme Court and law enforcement struggle with the problem of defining obscenity with objective standards. What is merely pornographic or sexual, sexually explicit, and what is actually obscene? The First Amendment also states that Congress shall make no law abridging the freedom of the press. An independent press is very important for representative democracy. We depend on the press to report on activities of the government. The independent press is important, but the downside is that they also need to generate revenue because of their independence. This sometimes leads to sensationalist headlines rather than accurate reporting. This is still preferable to the alternative, which would be a government-run press. There are complications when it comes to freedom of the press. The press needs to be able to cover events, but the rights of others must be protected too. Consider that the Sixth Amendment guarantees the accused shall enjoy the right to an impartial jury. However, in high-profile cases like the O.J. Simpson murder trial, the press covers the events very heavily, and it may be difficult to actually keep an impartial jury without limiting the press. The First Amendment also states that Congress shall make no law 
respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. This was not always the case prior to the Bill of Rights. Many early colonies had designated official churches, which believers and non-believers alike were forced to attend and support with their taxes. Interestingly, separation of church and state is not actually in the Constitution. James Madison did, however, identify religious conflict as an, as an issue that would generate fractional struggle. In the case Lemon v. Kurtzman, the court established three conditions every state law must sat satisfy to avoid running afoul of the establishment pro prohibition. First, the statute in question must have a secular legislative purpose. Second, the statute's primary effect must be one that neither advances nor inhibits religion. Third, the statute must not foster an excessive government entanglement with religion. These conditions became known as the Lemon Test. With the Neutrality Test, the court asks, is the law applied equally to religious institutions and secular institutions? If yes, then no violation has occurred. Vagueness has led to some contradictory outcomes. For example, prayer led by a school official at a football game is not okay, but it is okay for Congress to start every session with a prayer. As a point of clarification, the Supreme Court ruled that no state or local government may require the reading of the Lord's Prayer or Bible verses in public schools. However, individuals are free to pray in schools. If a student wishes to say a prayer at their desk, they may do so. If football players want to pray on the field after a game, they can. The prayer can't be led by a school official, and people cannot be required to participate in the prayer. So today, we have covered civil liberties. In the next slideshow, we will be covering the topic of public opinion.